Welcome back again, Insomniacs, to another episode of Never Sleep Again TV. Uh, I am Curious Cyclops. And I am Steve. And today, we want to talk about a nice Italian classic known as Suspiria, as they say in the trailer. Well, Suspiria, it's made by a god of horror known as Dario Argento. He's fucking amazing. We're going to be covering him a lot in future episodes because oh, sure. he just has so many good movies. But for um, people that aren't familiar with Argento's work, Suspiria is the perfect entry oh, yeah. level movie to get into his works. And it was my first Argento film. Yep, I think same. it was yours yep. too, right? Uh, well, uh, you know, when I can, I like to give a little origin story about how I saw it. All I'm going to say is, uh, a friend of mine that lives next door showed it to me when I was 18. Uh, sorry if this is a little edgy, but it's around the time where I first started smoking marijuana. It, marijuana's not so controversial anymore, so I don't care. You know, Whatever. We got medical in my city now, so uh, piss off. All right, Get off your moral high horse. But anyway, it was around the first time I started smoking weed. Uh, it was around 18. Um, at that point... I hadn't been scared from a horror movie for several years, and I almost went into a little depression. I think around 13 or 14, they stopped scaring me, horror films, right. you know, after a million nightmares about Freddy and Reagan from Exorcist and all that. But guess what? Smoking weed kind of opened me up <laughs> to be a little more scared again, because <laughs> let's just say I was pretty stoned uh, when my neighbors showed me this, and I was kind of, you know, falling asleep for a second and waking up. Uh, and I would wake up at the most fucked up, terrifying parts, and I would just speak, what the fuck is this? And they'd get, like, really scared and then pass out again. <laughs> <laughs> For this movie, though, that's so much more disorienting to just kind of, uh, like, fall in and out of it. It was. Um, especially because, we'll be talking about this scene later, but let's just say one of the most pivotal scenes that I woke up to was the barbed wire scene. Oh, nice. That fucked me up because I had no idea where the fuck is this girl right now? Why is there <laughs> a fucking room full of barbed wire? Uh, but anyway, yeah, Suspiria. So, uh, it came out in 1977. Uh, Dario Argento at this point, he already had made a name for himself with all his um, awesome Jalo films. Right. Especially the Animal Trilogy, mm -hmm. which is f f fantastic. I love them. Uh, luckily, I just saw Four Flies for the first time because, you know, uh, Andrew Weifel's got it on DVD, so that was cool. But Suspiria, it was a little different. He went a little more supernatural. You got little hints of supernatural and deep red, but this just went full spectrum supernatural. Yeah. Um, to the point where I would say the majority of fans agree that it's not a Jalo, even though it still has Jalo elements. Yeah. But still, some people call it a supernatural jalo like i think that's where andrew is at at this point mm -hmm. with that which is fine i'm not going to argue against it no yeah. but I, uh to me it's just it's a supernatural horror film and uh there's definitely going to be spoilers because i mean this movie's freaking old yeah but if you don't want to know uh the plot points don't watch this because what i'm going to tell you kind of is an ending reveal like, you don't really know what the fuck the movie is until the very end. Yeah. Because then you find out what it is. But I'm going to tell you right now, so spoiler, here it comes. This is a witch horror film. You have no fucking clue that it's a witch horror film until pretty much the end. And on top of that, surprisingly, the witch is such a classic icon, like from folklore and everything and scary stories, that I'm, I'm surprised that there aren't more witch horror films. Right. But that being said... In my opinion, this might be the best witch horror film of all time. Oh, I agree, yeah. Um, And that's fucking fantastic. And the witch is actually scary. Yeah. She scared me when I first saw it. Uh, so, Suspiria, what is it known for? It's definitely known for its lighting. Absolutely. Crazy lighting that makes no sense. Red and blue lighting that comes out of nowhere for no reason. And something you have to tell yourself... Go into this knowing it's like a dream. It's like oh, a fever yeah. dream. It's not a typical horror film. Like, the realism takes a back seat. It's more about the visuals and the experience because it is a ride. But it's about an American girl named Susie, played by Jessica Harper, mm -hmm. who we love because Jessica Harper is in a great musical that we love, a horror musical called Phantom of Paradise. Yes. Killed it in it. Um... 
I wasn't crazy about the Rocky Horror Picture Show sequel when I first saw it. Yeah. But she plays Janet in Shock Treatment, which is a sequel. And um, she's also in this legendary movie. So, you know, she definitely gets high respect, I would say. Oh, yeah. But anyway, she plays Susie, who's an American girl that got, I guess, invited out to a dance school in Germany. So she goes there, but right as she gets there, she sees a girl running through the woods screaming about an iris and secrets, and she doesn't know what the fuck's going on. And next thing she knows, the girl's gone the next day. Every time people disappear in this movie, the school's like, oh, they left, they had to leave for some reason. But anyway, she's at this dance academy. There's weird happenings going on, people disappearing, people getting murdered, and it gets covered up. But it's a supernatural witch horror film, which you don't find out to the end. But, uh, you know, Susie, she's a real heroine in this movie. Yeah. Um, because at the end of it, she ends up finding the secret passageways, finding out that it's a witch running to school, and she kills the witch and walks away, and she survives. So, But I want to talk about something, because it is a horror film, but it's not just cherished by horror films per se. Uh, I know for a fact that in some film schools and, you know, colleges that teach film courses, Suspiria definitely gets brought up. And in general, Dario Argento and David Lynch both get brought up. But Suspiria was so unique and it made such an impact. So many people tried to replicate Suspiria yeah. through the lighting, the mood, the certain shots. And something that we're not so crazy about is the newest wave of art house horror films. Yeah. A lot of the time, I feel like they try, they rip off Argento and Suspiria, but some of the times it works. Yeah. Like for instance, we'll be covering this later, but I thought it worked really well. And Mandy, a hundred percent agree. And people call that a art house horror film, and I think yes, it is, but it's a good example of one. It's not yeah, yeah. trash. It isn't trash. Okay, it's good. But that being said, Suspiria is also known as an art house horror film, and the classic example. That kind of paved the way for everyone else that wanted to do it in right. that style. But it's gorgeous. Um, and um, it recently got a 4K restoration, and it went oh. touring across the country, and then it got released on home video, which is great to own, and I love it. I just showed it to some friends last night. Two of them were first-timers. It scared the piss out of this girl that we were watching yeah. it with last night. Like She literally got scared. Do you know the heart scene when they stabbed the heart in the beginning? Yes. She didn't even see it because she literally had to cover her eyes. Because oh, the shit. girl getting stabbed repeatedly was enough for her. Wow. She, so let me tell you, it still holds up. 2019, and this girl's 20 years old, still holds up to this day. It still scares. And it scared me when I was 18. And yeah. at, at that point, I was a seasoned horror fan. Right. So it shouldn't have scared me, but it did because it's that good. But we talked a lot about the visual aspects. I would say 50% of what makes the movie great is the score. Steve, give them a little info about the score. Who did it and what's so crazy about it? <laughs> so uh, the score is uh, done by this band, Goblin. And it's it's just so perfectly atmospheric and, like, it's very simple. It's just, like, little synths and kind of, it's nothing crazy but like it just sets the tone for the entire movie dude and like sometimes i'll drive around listening to that score in my car and it'll freak me out a little mm-hmm. too much and i'll have to fucking turn that I'll shit tell you, off a year ago in october i had to like walk to 7-eleven when my car was out of commission i put that on my headphones just gonna take a nice nighttime walk dude five minutes i not even five minutes i had to turn it off yeah because i was like oh i'm looking around in the sky and like oh i'm like oh something some effigy is gonna come stab me. Right, because not only do you have like the just the simple like the, mm. but then they're like whispering in the background and go yeah. witch, witch, which when you're first watching it and you're hearing it, you think you hear the word witch, but you're not 100 percent sure. Right, but it's almost like a little spoiler in yeah. itself that oh, this is a witch horror film, but it really it really sets the tone. And do you know how in old school cartoons? The music literally correlates with what's going on in the scene. That does happen in this movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, for instance, right when Susie's getting out of the airport in the beginning, you hear the music when it's showing you the outside, and then it shows her on the inside, and then it kind of stops. And then as soon as the sliding doors open to the outside, the music comes right back in. And a lot of people I heard, some people complain about this, 
and some people like it, but the volume levels spike mm-hmm. a lot. Um, I believe we watched it together, and yeah. it was so fucking loud that sometimes you would have to adjust the volume because it just it's sp- it does spike very high at some yeah. points. But it, it's definitely part of the atmosphere, and, and it can be a little jarring. A little bit, yeah. But uh, the audio, the the score, it's just as important and just as powerful as the visual aspects. And I think that's a huge reason why it was so successful oh, was yeah. the Goblin score. So, uh, and luckily, for the first time, we got to see an incarnation of Goblin. We got to see Claudio Sima- Simonetti's Goblin in, uh, what was it, Lancaster? Yeah, At Chameleon the Chameleon Club. Club. And Albert, shout out to Albert, he's... He uh, runs the Lehigh Valley Horror Community Facebook page. He's also a member of the LV Reapers, our local horror club. He came along with us, and we had such a great time. Oh, it was time. awesome. And it was for a special tour for Suspiria, where they were showing, uh, I guess, the new restoration of Suspiria projected behind them. And we literally saw the whole movie being scored live by Claudio Simonetti's Goblin. And then afterward, which was a nice treat, they played some other movie yeah. uh, clips with those songs. So it was great to experience it in that manner. Oh, yeah. As well as just watching it normally in a home setting. And also seeing it on 35mm at Mahoning Drive-In during the real weird weekend. Yep. So I, I, I th- I'd say we had some good runs with this movie. Oh, seen yeah. it in every way possible, pretty much. Seeing it with the live score. Uh, whoever missed out on that, I feel a little bad if they don't do it again. Because yeah. that was kind of a lo- once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, I felt like. Originally, Andrew and Dan, uh, our buddies from Bethlehem, they were going to get me a ticket for a show earlier in the year in New York that sold out very quickly. Oh, wow. So we couldn't do it. Then luckily, for s- some reason, they announced, oh, we're going to add a one random show date, and it happened to be the Chameleon Club. And you hopped right the fuck Oh, yeah. As, as soon as I saw it posted to the page, I bought the tickets yeah, right away. Yeah, he got away. a ticket for me and him, and it was like, we're committed, we're going to this, no matter what. Yeah. Especially because the New York date sold out. Right. And it kind of worked out, because this was closer for us anyway. Yeah. Which was cool. But, um... So, yeah, keep in mind, the score is awesome. If you're watching it late at night, maybe be have the channel changer handy for the yeah. volume. Um, I got to say, besides the visual aspects influencing people, obviously, Goblin influenced a lot of people um, when it comes to film schools, including our friends. Uh, I know Justin from Gift Pills, who we had on the show, huge Goblin fan. And right. aside from the horse soundtracks, he even likes their... Uh, just regular prog stuff oh, that nice. has nothing to do with the movies. And I know um, our buddy Matt behind the Hextracise, who also does, uh, he has an awesome um, music project called Lapses, where it's kind of in that vein. It sounds like horror music. But obviously, he's a big Goblin fan, too. So Suspiria on all fronts is extremely influential. Oh, yeah. Um, and especially for 77, wow, what a trippy movie that must have been and crazy experience that must have been. Yeah, and talk about a movie that stands the test of time, dude. It's coming up on being 50 years old, and it's still just as impactful yeah. as it was when it came out. And like I said, there are some Jalo elements. Like I said, the whole mystery of how are these people dying? Like We know there's a supernatural element, but they make it a point to say the person that's running this dance hall, no one ever really sees her. In fact... They hear her snoring when maggots fill up the place, and they had to move all the students into some uh, auditorium room, it looked like, or a dance room to yeah. sleep until they cleaned up the mess. But uh, I got to say, the witch, Mater Suspirium, her human name, Helena Marcos, a Greek immigrant that uh, was known for doing witchcraft, and she got kicked out of... She got, like, exiled from certain European countries, and eventually she faked her own death in a fire... And ended up staying alive for all those years, running this dance hall. And I gotta say, as someone that has a Greek grandmother, Helena Marcos definitely reminded me of her. <laughs> I'm not not to be mean, but slightly visually how she looks. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, yeah. But yeah, Helena Marcos, she's fucking terrifying in this movie. You don't see her until the end when Susie stabs her, but holy shit does she look terrifying.
And she's one of the scariest witches, I think, in film history. Oh, yeah. She's right up there with Wicked Witch of the West, who I still think is scary, because when I was a kid, she scared the shit. Right. But to be honest, there's not enough witch horror films, so uh, if you want an awesome witch horror film, this is the perfect way to go. If you're a horror fan in general and you haven't seen the original Suspiria, please, please go see it. Yeah. We will be touching upon the remake in a future episode, but we have our own opinions about that, which yeah. we'll get into. But uh, please, even if you haven't seen the Suspiria remake, I say watch the original first. Oh, yeah. That's just what I say. Um, and one more thing, besides the visuals, besides the audio, the lore is so great. Interestingly enough, you don't get too much information until parts two and three, which is Inferno and Mother of Tears, which as a whole make up the Three Mothers trilogy. Because, sorry to tell you, but this witch, she might have been defeated, but she has two really evil sisters, which show up in the later sequels, and we will cover those as well Yeah. at a later time. But Suspiria, uh, I know we don't get into ratings too much, but hey, I'm going to say it's a 10 out of fucking 10. Oh, yeah. For sure. You agree? 10 out of 10? 100%, yeah. Um, one of the best horror films of all time. If I was forced with a, by gunpoint to make a top five list, I know I would be somewhere in the top five. Oh, yeah. That's just how good it is. And when I saw it when I was 18 and it scared me at a point where I hadn't been scared from a horror film for four or five years, that's a testament The fact that to how good it is. The fact that I saw it last night with a girl that's 20 that saw it for the first time, she was terrified from beginning to end. That's a testament that it still holds up. And... I'm going to be the dick to say, I don't think the remake was necessary. I don't think you need to see it. Sometimes people think you got to modernize it because audiences aren't scared of the old stuff. You're still going to be scared when you see this yeah. if you're in the right mindset. And you know what? If you really do want to be scared, watch it alone. Watch it at night. Watch it with all the lights off and the volume up as long as you're not going to disturb anyone else in your household. Right. But I'm confident in saying it is one of the best horror films of all time. Oh, yeah. And one of Ar Dario Argento's best. When I first got into Argento and I saw his other films, I called it his best film. At this point, I consider his Jalo almost separately, so I judge him differently. But when it comes to Supernatural, Dario Argento, still number one in my book. Um, so, uh, and the lore, again, they it gives you more information in parts two and three. But apparently... This was based off of really old writings over like 100 years old from a, a guy named Thomas De Quincey. And his writings, he, he was known for doing like essays and stuff. And he wrote something called Suspiria de Profundis. And I guess this guy, I guess he would like take drugs and write these crazy things and have visions or something. But Shit. that's where this whole idea came from. It was from that. So uh, that's really cool. But... Any uh, other thoughts? Anything else? No, not really. I honestly uh, just to piggyback on the whole visual thing, and we you mentioned the 4K restoration. I feel like anybody who doesn't own that 4K restoration right now is making a mistake. Yep, it's, Synapse it's did a great so job. So fucking beautiful. And Steve, uh, you first saw this. It was a few years ago, right? Yeah. And so you were a, pretty much a grown man at this point. Oh yeah. Did it scare you at all? Oh, absolutely, it... dude. And and I was I was hesitant because I'm not the biggest witch movie fan. Yeah. Uh, they're they're very hit and miss with me. So when I was when I heard it was a witch movie, I was like, eh, maybe. But I checked it out anyway, and dude, it's it's just creepy and unsettling, and it really just sets a tone that kind of like pulls you in and holds you there for the entire length of the movie. And be prepared for violence, because there's a lot of very graphic violence. Yeah. Surprisingly, for something in 1977. Right. It was very violent, and that seems to be a thing with Italian movies. But as someone who saw it for the first time in your mid-20s, you would say that's also a testament to how good it is. Oh, was, absolutely. Right? it still creeped you out. Yeah. So guys, don't waste any more time. Go fucking see it. Rent it, buy it, whatever you got to do. Just see this fucking movie. Yeah. All right, well, that's going to wrap up our thoughts. Curious Cyclops. And Steve. Thank you for watching Never Sleep Again TV.